Welcome to Learning DSLR Back to Basics. My name is Phil Dame. What I thought I'd do, uh, instead of blogging a series about uh, core and fundamental topics about DSLR photography, um, I really thought this is something that needed to be shown visually. So I put together this um, small kind of animated deck to walk us through uh, different concepts. And I'll be doing this in various episodes, and this is the first episode. Um, in this episode, we're going to cover off three related topics, focal length, angle of view, and crop factor. They all relate to lenses and the camera and the camera sensor specifically. And since they all go together, it really made sense to describe them together. Let's first talk about focal length. Excuse my crude diagrams. Here's my camera made of a camera body and a lens. And if you looked at the lens, let's just say this was a, what we call a prime lens, it just, it doesn't zoom or anything. And I look at the label of the lens, it might say it's a Canon 50mm f1.4 USM lens. That's a lot to think about, but what we're thinking and focusing on right now is the, is the amount in millimeters. That's the focal length, 50 millimeters. So it begs the question, what is it about a 50 millimeter lens that actually measures 50 millimeters? It's certainly not just the barrel size, um, although it's related. Um, we have to think about a lens in terms of how it's actually built. And it's actually made, all lenses are made of multiple pieces of glass, multiple lenses that work together. But for this explanation, let's think about it as if it were just a 50 millimeter magnifier, a single piece of glass. Now, a lens can focus light, but let's think about the light itself. Um, let's take the sun, a great simple example. The sun is so far away and is really realistically so small to us that all light coming in is traveling along parallel lines. So what does it take for a lens to converge those lines and make a hotspot? That distance from the center of the lens to the point where it converges is, is the lens's focal length. So this is why you can see it's related to the barrel uh, size in the sense that if it takes longer to converge, it takes a deeper barrel to do it. But again, there's multiple pieces of glass inside the lens that, that kind of affect this. So let's think about a lens almost as if it were like a pinhole camera. And you've got a person standing in front of the lens. What's actually happening is that unlike the sun, there's no parallel lines here. These lines are coming at the lens and what happens is that it, the lens actually inverts the image against the camera sensor. So if you've built a pinhole camera as a child, you'd remember this, that the picture comes actually flipped and upside down. But the rule still applies regardless of it. Instead of converging the light, it's expanding it, but it's expanding it onto the camera sensor in focus. That distance is still the focal length. And in this case, it's 50 millimeters. So let's think about different focal lengths. Let's just say I want to take a picture, a portrait of someone's face, really close up shot. So I'm gonna draw a face here and I've got now less of the person I wanna get into the picture, but uh, the distance between the lens uh, and my camera sensor can't vary that greatly. Uh, it does need to be a bit wider uh, to allow this kind of angle as you see here and that's why the focal length ends up being longer. So a longer or bigger focal length, such as 100 millimeters, is actually a, a tighter view, a more magnified view. So that's a 100 millimeter lens. So let's do the opposite. Now I've got my subject in front of a beautiful landscape, some mountains, and I want to grab, uh, capture both the person and the landscape. So I have a much wider uh, kind of perspective that's necessary and I need to fit all of that on the camera sensor and the camera sensor of course Isn't a mile away. It's right next to the uh, lens So I don't have very much room to travel to fit all that in and that's an example of a very short focal length in this case 18 millimeters So we talked about angles this angle is what's called the angle of view and for an 18 millimeter lens It can be said to be a hundred degrees the number doesn't really matter. The point is, is that relative to the focal length, uh, they have different angles of view. So let's compare that. Let's bring our camera back into the picture. Let's take that 18 millimeter picture. We got good wide coverage 
18, uh, 18 millimeters being 100 degrees. And let's say I zoom in a bit to 35 millimeters, I'm actually only going to get 54 degrees coverage. So if we come back to it, let's do a summary. The focal length is the distance between the center of a lens and its focusing point. And the larger focal lengths reduce the angle of view, so it's getting tighter, more magnified. And in simple terms, more millimeters means more zoom. So um, in terms of the various uses, there's been a variety of names that have been assigned to different focal lengths, and these just really help uh, you remember different uses uh, for those focal lengths and how they match up to the numbers. Let's start in the middle there, the one called standard normal. That's what kind of approximates your, the human eye, so it's what you, you would expect to see. So uh, it's a very popular focal length, and uh, that's why they call it the standard and they call it normal, again, because it just approximates what we're used to. Anything else is a, is a variation on that. If you go uh, up, you see to a smaller numbers, you've got, you're going to see a lot more in the same uh, image, so it's anywhere from you know, 16 to 35 millimeters is going to be wide, and you can even go super wide, like 8 millimeters, that's called a fisheye. Um, but if you go to larger than 50 millimeters, you're starting to actually magnify, and that's called telephoto, and you've got medium telephoto, regular, and super telephoto. And super telephotos are these foot uh, long, two foot long, white barreled lenses that you see at the um, tennis matches and uh, baseball games where the photographers are zooming in incredibly long and so they have very deep focal lengths and they're very big pieces of glass and can run uh, be very expensive but before we can think about those focal lengths and going off to buy a, a lens for what we think we're going to get we have to factor in what camera we actually own um, since we've moved from film photography to digital photography, uh, we've made a transition in terms of the internals of the camera. The sensor, the digital sensor inside your camera, for the most part, is not the size of film. There are cameras the, whose digital sensor is that size. They're called full frame cameras and they're fairly expensive. You're talking about a camera body that's uh, well over $2,000 and it is actually going to be the same physical size as film, a film negative, 36 by 24 millimeters. But for the rest of us, um, let's say on the Canon line, you're talking about a Canon Rebel uh, or a 550D, uh, camera, uh, 60D, 70D, these are all crop sensor cameras. These are all cameras that have a smaller sensor than the full frame. And in Nikon, you might think of those as uh, DX format cameras something like the uh, Nikon D3100 or D7000. So let's just talk about a Canon example because there is a small difference between Canon and Nikon. But the Canon sensor size is exactly 22.2 millimeters by 14.8. Um, both Canon and Nikon call this size APS or APS-C. And as you can tell, if you do some basic math here, it's 1.6 times smaller. And that's an important number to remember and I'll show you why. So let's think about the crop factor in terms of lenses. Luckily, Canon and Nikon make lenses that fit both cameras, film cameras, cameras with full frame sensors, and the sensors that we have in our digital cameras, our entry level digital cameras, the APS-C uh, sensors. Uh, in Canon speak, they call those lenses EF or EF mount lenses, and in Nikon it's called FX. So if I'm taking a picture of this person here, the red lines show the exact uh, kind of light coming into the lens and into the sensor. And you'll notice that the, 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 um, the light projected onto the sensor is actually bigger than the crop sensor. So what's happening in effect is that we don't actually see the entire image. The camera doesn't actually see the entire image being produced by the lens. Instead, it sees a smaller portion. And if you look at the green lines, how it intersects the person, we're cutting off their head and cutting off their feet. And so we've got really, in effect, a smaller angle of view. And it's going to feel like the image is magnified. We haven't really magnified the image. What we've done is only take the center portion of the image. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. So how do you know what you're getting? Take that 50 millimeter lens that Canon and Icon is providing you. 
multiply it by 1.6, and then you get that quote unquote 35 millimeter equivalent. So in this case, 50 millimeters times 1.6 is 80 millimeters. Um, so it really feels like an 80 millimeter lens. It has the angle of view of an 80 millimeter lens for the most part. So the question is now, you see uh, available to you lenses that are not EF, but EFS. So these are optimized for digital cameras. And in Nikon speak, those are called DX lenses. And what they've done is they've reduced the cost of producing the lens by shrinking the diameter of the actual lens itself. So you're effectively taking the photo, just as we saw in the previous slide, as you see here, but it fits exactly to the sensor of our camera. If you were to try to pair this lens to a full frame camera, you'd actually not be able to see the edges of the frame. Uh, you'd actually get an image that looks like a, a crazy amount of vignette. What's happening in, in, in our cameras is that we're actually only taking the portion of the image that is completely kind of rendered on the sensor and very clear. So, the question now is, well, I don't want to crop the person's head or feet and I don't want to ask them to step back. I, I actually just want to have a lens that feels like 50, mil 50 millimeters. What do I need to buy? And the simple question, the simple answer to that is, is we need to bring effectively like the sensor closer to the, to the lens or they have to have a smaller focal length so that we can get that wider angle of view. And you just have to do some simple math there. If you're looking for the equivalent of 50 millimeters, now instead of multiplying, you divide by 1.6. The math here is 31.25 millimeters, and there's no such lens um, for sale, but you can jump to up or down a, a small amount and find the lens that's closest to it. And in this case, a 35 millimeter lens is a very popular and easy to find lens. And that's something that you can buy for a crop sensor camera that's gonna give you the feeling of a 50 millimeter lens. So let's go back to that chart I had. We've got the common labels for various focal lengths, wide, telephoto, and so on. And the first column is what I showed you earlier. Uh, if you just simply just multiply, uh, sorry, divide those by 1.6 for Canon or Nikon, it would be a factor of 1.5 because the sensor is a bit bigger. You get a sense now of what focal lengths you need to buy or what lenses you need to buy to get those benefits. So if I'm looking for a very, very wide uh, lens, perhaps suitable for shooting an interior edge to edge, for, for example, for real estate, then a, a 15 millimeter lens is not really going to do it. I'm going to have to get a 10 millimeter lens. Um, so you start to, to look at those equivalents and you see that you have to buy very wide to get basic, uh, you know, wide angle uh, imagery. But the benefit on the flip side is that you don't need to spend nearly half as much to get great telephoto performance. I can buy a 200 millimeter lens and get a significant bump that would cost me thousands of dollars in additional uh, lens, really. So it's, a, it's actually a great benefit and is, is the reason why the crop sensor cameras are very good for uh, sports and action photography. So that's it. If you have any questions about uh, this tutorial, this overview on any of these topics, uh, please feel free to comment here on the blog post or on the video uh, on YouTube and let me know. And I'll be following up with additional episodes. Uh, and the next episode is going to be about Aperture. You can find me at learningdslr.com and, of course, on the social media websites. I, Facebook page is slash learningdslr, and you can tweet me anytime at, at learningdslr. Thank you.